We're at 7.7a now in Algebra 1, equation of a line modeling data. We can often write the relationship between two variables as a linear equation. You know, when it's graphed, it'll make a straight line. That's a linear equation. And this linear equation is a model of the situation. We can use the model to make estimates or predictions about the amounts represented by the variables. So remember, in linear equations, we can have several x and y values that'll make the equation true. We can list the values in a function table. So we've got this equation 2x plus y equals 7. Every single one of these x and y values will make this equation true, and they make ordered pairs. 0, 7 is an ordered pair. 1, 5 is an ordered pair. And if we use 0 for x, 2 times 0 is 0, and we use 7 for y, 0 plus 7 is 7. See? And they'll make it true. OK, so let's see what we've got here. To make 50 pairs of earrings, it costs Tala $6 per pair for the supplies. If she buys her supplies in a larger quantity, like in bulk, she saves money. And 200 pairs of earrings can be made for only $3 a pair. Wow, she cuts her cost in half, doesn't she? So we're going to let E be the number of earrings she makes and C be the cost per pair. We're going to assume that a linear relationship fits these data amounts. So our ordered pairs are going to be E, C for X, Y. We can write a linear equation that fits the data. So E is X, C is Y, and we end up with 50 pairs for $6 and 200 pairs for $3 in our function table there on the left. And we can use the ordered pairs 50 comma 6 and 200 comma 3 as our x1, y1, x2, y2. We can find a linear equation. So the first thing we do is find the slope using these two ordered pairs. And we do our subtraction. 3 take away 6 as our y2 minus y1 and 200 take away 50 as our x2 minus x1. And we get negative 3 over 150. Now that simplifies to a negative 150th slope. Now we can use this ordered pair as our x1, y1. We could choose any one of these we want. I could use 200 and, and the 3 as the x1, y1. But I chose to use the 50 and the 6. So now we've got our point and our slope, and we use the point-slope point equation. So we're going to do it in this form right here. So our x and y are going to be e and c, and then our x1 is going to be 50, and our y1 is going to be 6. See, right here? Now we just solve the equation. We have to use distributive property with the negative 150th, and we get negative 150th e, and when we multiply the negative 150th times negative 50, we get a positive 1, because it's 50 over 50, and a negative and a negative makes a positive. So now we have a plus 1. And this minus 6 on this side has to go away. We need to eliminate it to isolate that c to one side. So we're going to add 6 to both sides with additive inverse. And that gets rid of this as a 0 pair. And now we've got c equals negative 150th e plus 7. See? Now we can use this linear equation to predict the cost to prepare for 300 pairs of earrings. So if she makes more earrings, assuming there's still a linear relationship, it's in slope-intercept form. All we have to do is plug the 300 in where the e is. And when we multiply negative 150th times 300, we get negative 300 over 50. 50 goes into 300 six times, so we have a negative 6. When we add a negative 6 and a positive 7, we get a 1. So we know it's only a dollar a pair if she makes 300 pairs. That's really going to boost her profits, won't it, if she keeps the price the same? All right, so now let's take a look at coffee. We've got a 48-ounce container of coffee costs 25 cents per ounce, and a 32-ounce container, a smaller container, costs 27 cents per ounce. The price went up per ounce by 2 cents, didn't it? Now, if we assume a linear relationship fits these data amounts, we can have ordered pairs S for X1 and P for Y1. That'll be the size and the price. We can write a function table with our x value and our y value as s and p. 48 ounce is 25 cents per ounce. 32 ounce is 27 cents per ounce. And we write our ordered pairs, 48.25 and 32.27. Now we can find the slope first. That's the first thing we do. So we do our y2 minus y1 and our x2 minus x1. And we get 27 take away 25 is a 2. And 32 minus 48 is a negative 16. Well, that gives us a negative 1 8 slope. See? We just used this formula. So now we got negative 1 8 slope. We need to pick one of these ordered pairs. And I chose this one. So if we use 
48 is the x1 and 25 is the y1 as our point, and we have our slope of negative 1 8, we can write the point, point slope equation, which is right here. See? And we're going to use p for our y and s for our x. We're going to use 25 for our y1 and 48 for our x1. And when we multiply distributive property, negative 1 8 times s, we get negative 1 8 s. And negative 1 8 times negative 48, well, that gives us a positive 48 over 8. We simplify that to a 6 because 6 times 8 is 48. So now we've got negative 1 8 s plus 6. We need to get rid of the 25 on this side, so we add 25 to both sides for additive inverse to make a zero pair. That makes this get eliminated right here, and we end up with just p equals negative 1 8 s plus, we add these, 31. See? Now it's in slope-intercept form. We can use this equation to predict the price of a 16-ounce can of coffee per ounce. So we were at 48, and it was at 25. Then when we went down to a smaller can, to 32, the price went up to 27. So what would a 16 ounce can cost per ounce? So where the six, the uh, the x is, we plug in the 16. See where the s was, or it's the same thing as the x, and 1 8 times a positive 16 gives us a negative 16 over 8. Well, that's a negative 2. Negative 2 plus the 31 is 29. So we know if we bought a 16-ounce can, we'd be paying 29 cents per ounce. So the smaller the can, the more we have to pay per ounce. See? You buy a bigger quantity, and you save money. Now, it's not always true at the store. Sometimes you get a better deal for buying a smaller one. You have to do the math. All right? So our next video is going to be 7.7b, and we're going to talk about the line of best fit. And it's about clusters of data on a graph with several points of information and you draw a line that fits the data best okay if you want to go back in this video's description uh, there's going to be links to similar and previous videos on point slope equation slope intercept equation of a line graphing using intercepts and slope from an equation all of those will be in here in the link the links will be in the description okay Okay, I hope you're having a good day. This was a lot of information, and I hope you understand these two examples, and I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work. Bye.